on A News at 5. After considerable soul searching and discussion with my family, I've decided to ask the BC Liberal Party Executive to hold a leadership convention at the earliest possible date to select a new leader of the party. I've always been motivated by what is best for this great province and this great country. Thank you. It's been a privilege. Thank you very much. The end of the Gordon Campbell era in British Columbia politics. Tonight on A News, what happened to drive the Premier out and what happens next. This is A News at 5. Good evening. Thank you for being here on what has been a stunning day in B.C. politics. After a decade as the province's premier, Gordon Campbell has resigned. He announced this morning that he is stepping down, calling on the Liberal Party to hold a leadership convention as quickly as possible. Campbell was taken down by the HST. He says anger over the unpopular tax has bogged his government down in its ability to get the job done. So it's time for him to go. That he quit is perhaps less surprising than the timing of the departure with a hastily called announcement late this morning. When public debate becomes focused on one person, as opposed to what's in the best interests of the province of British Columbia, we've lost sight of what is important. When that happens, it's time for a change. This decision is what I believe is in the best interests of British Columbia, our government, our party, and the people who live here. It's time for a new person to lead the province. I'm asking the party to move as quickly as possible to organize this leadership convention. I intend to assure a smooth and orderly transition. My goal is to return public attention to what is important to British Columbians, their jobs, their families, and how government can best support them. It's not always popular to do what you think in your heart is right and in the long-term interests of our province and the families who live here. If you'll allow me a personal note, I want to thank all of my family, my sister, my brothers, my nieces and nephews, but most importantly, Nancy and Jeffrey and Nicholas. They have all paid a price for my 26 years of public service. Politics can be a very nasty business. And at times, that nastiness spilled over into their own personal lives. For that, I am sorry. I feel blessed to have had the opportunity to serve in this position longer than most of my predecessors and to have been part of this incredible time in British Columbia's history. It's been quite a run and a lot more fun than not. I've always been motivated by what is best for this great province and this great country. Thank you. It's been a privilege. Thank you very much. 26 years in politics, nine years in the British Columbia Premier's office until today when Gordon Campbell fell on his sword. We have extensive coverage of the Premier's resignation tonight, beginning with our legislature reporter, Shachi Curl. I've decided to ask the B.C. Liberal Party executive to hold a leadership convention at the earliest possible date to select a new leader of the party. In the end, it was a sudden end for the Premier who'd led B.C. for a decade, and it caught party faithful completely off guard. I can almost feel that place in my gut where somebody's kicked me. Uh, it's, it's very, um, you know, it's personal, it's very upsetting. Well, um, he did the honourable thing, uh, he did a, a courageous thing. Uh, he, he's got the best interests of the province, I think, at heart. Uh, well, uh, I was saddened to hear uh, him make the announcement today. Campbell was not taking reporters' questions today, but it must have been a bitter end for him. He rode to victory in 2001, crushing the NDP, but it was the events of the last 18 months that eventually crushed him. We're facing a situation that, candidly, we couldn't plan for. A broken promise on balanced budgets, a deficit that tripled in size after the election. A sudden decision to implement the harmonized sales tax, a bad job of selling it. Saanich North. A defeat at the hands of those who chose to fight the tax. Blair Lextrom. Then defections from members of his own cabinet. All that plus approval ratings in the single digits. Given that there had been so much talk, so much speculation around how much longer Gordon Campbell's leadership could last. 
The thought was he would go, but next year sometime, taking all the party's political baggage with him. The last week did not reflect a premier ready to leave. He'd overhauled his cabinet and rolled out a 15% income tax cut on TV. So why now? Why today? Sources tell A News he may not have had a choice. I can only believe that something was way bigger than, uh, than what he was thinking. So perhaps there was something coming down that, we, oh, that I certainly had not predicted. There are reports he may have been given news his own party members didn't want him as leader, news that would have been potentially embarrassing at the upcoming Liberal Party convention. There were also reports a number of caucus members had signed a letter telling Campbell to go, but no one is confirming that. It's probably an urban legend. I have not seen that letter, and I haven't talked to anybody who has signed such a letter. The opposition leader says it boiled down to one thing. I think the HST is the straw that broke the camel's back. So what happens next? The party has seven months to choose a new leader, though it could be sooner. Early contenders in cabinet include Health Minister Kevin Falcon, Solicitor General Rich Coleman, and Attorney General Mike DeYoung. But will a new face be enough to save the party? It could be someone from municipal politics, Diane Watts. Could be someone from the federal scene. We could see, uh, you know, a high-profile federal politician. Gordon Campbell has spent most of his adult life in politics as mayor of Vancouver, as opposition leader, as premier. It's been quite a run and a lot more fun than not. Along the way his family has been with him, he saved his last words for them. And I want to say thanks to them for their love and their support. Shachi Curl joins us now live at the legislature with more. Shachi, you mentioned three uh, possible contenders in your report. What other names are we hearing tonight? Well, uh, we also heard in that report, Hudson, uh, Diane Watts, mayor of Surrey. This is a name that's uh, been buzzing and binging around for a couple of years now. The challenge with her, uh, the taxi driver on the way over here just said that he liked Diane Watts for premier. The, the issue is she's from Surrey, Kevin Falcon's from Surrey. So one of them has to make a decision to bow out. Will that come down to fund fundraising or the numbers of supporters they might have in caucus or at the party level? That's one of the things. John Furlong is out there. Uh, we heard John Baird, the federal transportation minister stand up in the house today and say uh, that he thought uh, that uh, federal Chuck MP BC Chuck Strahl would be out there. So uh, who knows? I mean, Chuck Strahl has been dealing with some health issues, but really this does uh, blow things wide open. Uh, yet at the same time, one of the, the most uh, heavy favorites early on to succeed Gordon Campbell, Carol Taylor, uh, doesn't appear to be in the race. She uh, recently took on the chancellorship of Simon Fraser University saying, this is it, I'm done, I'm tied down, I don't want the job, I told you that, now I'm taking another job. Mm. Uh, in any event, it's going to be very interesting to see who takes that on Hudson because whoever it is will present a new and a, and a fresh opportunity and, uh, and all that much harder for NDP leader Carol James to take on. Absolutely. She is someone uh, that many British Columbians might support, although she would lose face if she was to, to now... Uh, throw her hat into the ring. Take us through the timeline, Shachi. The, the uh, party convention's in just a couple of weeks in the Okanagan, and then uh, how long will it be until we get to a leadership? There, there's no time for a campaign for anyone who wants the job. Well, that's exactly it, Hudson. Uh, this morning's announcement, not only did it did it take almost everyone off guard, I'm sure it must have t taken a lot of the party executive, the Liberal Party executive off guard. They were planning for this convention. The convention was going to be interesting because a lot of people were thinking there would be some sort of showdown or blowout on the convention floor in terms of what the membership thought of Gordon Campbell's leadership. It may be that he decided to quit today because he knew the numbers were not very good for him, but we don't know that. What we do know is is that the convention, if it still goes ahead and, and there's nothing to say one way or the other whether or not it will, uh, will uh, be uh, something that is a tribute for Gordon Campbell, but there will not be a convention coming up. That would come in the next six months, although Campbell has said he wants it as soon as possible. All right, Chachi, thank you. We'll leave it at that and check back with you a little later. Okay. Thank you. Well, the first sign that today would be the day that the wheels would come off came from political blogger Brian Kieran. You may recognize his name. He's a former province newspaper columnist and a former lobbyist who is connected to the B.C. rail scandal. On his blog, Kieran revealed that as many as 17 Liberal MLAs had signed a secret letter to the Premier calling on him to resign in a timely fashion, warning that they were not prepared to follow the leader into political oblivion. There was a feeling as well that 
The uh, delegates heading to convention in Penticton on the 19th of November may not have been overwhelming in their support for the Premier. There was a secret ballot. So the combination, I think, for the Premier uh, was uh, pretty formidable. One, he finally, after all these years of running a really tight ship, he finally had MLAs that were, were rising up and prepared to tell him to that he had to leave or they were going to sit as independents. And two, he was facing a convention where he might not have the kind of support he always enjoyed. Joining us now live at the legislature with her reaction is NDP leader Carol James. Ms. James, thanks for joining us. Thank uh, you. You Good have evening. been uh, political foes your entire careers, but today would be the day to say something nice about the Premier. What would that be? Well, I think it's important to thank anyone who's put the kinds of years of service that Gordon Campbell has put in to the public, both as mayor, as leader of the opposition, and as premier. And also a special thank you to his family. Anyone in public life knows the kinds of sacrifices, the birthdays, the family events that you miss. So I think a huge thank you for his family's sacrifice in the years of service he put in. Is this the sort of thing that you can take advantage of, or does this resignation uh, kind of kick the legs out of your strategy, giving a new Liberal leader time to get in and get established, shake off the old baggage and dangle some uh, goodies before voters uh, in time for the next election? Well, you know, I don't know anyone in British Columbia who really believed that Gordon Campbell was going to run in the next election. I've been preparing all along for someone else to be in place. And I, while I expect the Liberals hope that they can wipe the slate clean, let's remember that any new leader that comes in will have the questions waiting for them. The questions around the betrayal on HST, the questions around the broken trust with the public of British Columbia, the lack of increase in the minimum wage, the high child poverty rate, the lack of care for seniors, the BC Rail corruption trial, and all of the questions that go with that. So all of those things will be waiting for the new leader when they're elected. So much as I expect the Liberals hope that this will wipe the slate clean, they need to think again. It will do anything but the public really has lost trust in the Liberals, and that doesn't sit with Gordon Campbell. That sits with every one of the Liberal MLAs. Does, does what happened today uh, give a warning to you? How secure are you in your leadership? You had the Bob Simpson business, and some pundits say that uh, if you don't seize this opportunity, you're next. Well, you know, I think everyone who's leader of a political party knows that there are always people who aren't going to agree with the direction that you go in. I'm continuing my focus on giving people something to vote for in the next election. People always say in British Columbia, governments are voted out. Well, I want to make sure that people have something to vote for in this next election. I'm going to build that positive alternative, continue putting my priorities of investing in people, building a strong economy, a sustainable future for all of us, and fair, open government that respects the people of British Columbia. It's been a long time coming. People have been waiting a long time to send that message to the B.C. Liberals. Now they have the opportunity to do that. All right, Carol James, NDP leader, thank you for taking the time for us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, what do you think about Gordon Campbell's resignation today, and how do you think he will be remembered as the province's 34th premier? Here's some of what you told us today. The HSC, that's, I think, what is his ultimate undoing. But it depends what side the fence you're on. I mean, what, what other information I read about him was that he had to make those hard-end cuts, and he had to do the things that were going to get him disliked by everyone. Well, I think it's a shrewd move. It was obvious he was going to do that. And... Uh, gets him the chance to say with a new person that was then this is now but it's the same government he's been screwing us for almost 10 years and uh i don't know it doesn't matter which sector is he's screwed and screwed and screwed and i wonder who's going to follow well i think it's going to cause a lot of um instability in government and i think that's uh, a shame for those of us that require the services and for the people that work there well, he's been in too long and i think you get stale and i think you need new ideas it's a good idea. We need somebody else in there that um, can make some changes. So his face isn't possibly the most positive one for BC right now. How do you think he's going to be remembered? You don't want to record that. <laughs> It did not take word of the Premier's resignation long to spread through the ranks of B.C.'s union members. It even prompted one government union to break out in song on the steps of the legislature today. La, 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 la. Hey, goodbye. Bye, Gordy. These are QP members who say this is a great day for British Columbia and that Premier Gordon Campbell has done the province a favor. QP says Campbell's cuts to health care, education and social programs put thousands of British Columbians out of work and that today is a day of redemption for B.C. workers. So what happens next? We'll have much more on the Premier's resignation. We'll look back on his career and much more on the story later on A News at 5.